So let's talk about descriptive statistics, which is basically used for representation of data. First of all, let's talk about the types of data we have. It's important to learn the types of data because later on we will apply operations on the data and the type of data will ultimately will be the deciding factor of what type of operation we will apply on it. Whether it is visualization of the data, whether it is general pre-processing, whether it is ext uh, data extraction, whether it is feature engineering, different types of data will have different types of operations. So a data type can be of mainly two types, numerical and categorical. Numerical can be further divided into continuous and discrete and categorical in the same way can be divided into nominal and ordinal. So let's talk about categorical nominal data. As the name infers, it's quite obvious we're talking about categories. So let's look at an example. We usually see a lot of survey forms and in these survey forms, sometimes uh, there are a lot of similar questions like what is your gender? Which language do you speak? So as you can see, the answer is basically completely exclusive. There is no intermediate relation between English, French, German, or Spanish. Obviously, the, each of the answer is independent from the other. So this is what we would classify as categorical nominal data. Let's talk about ordinal data. This is another type of categorical data. And as the name infers, the ordinal, the word comes from order. So there is a certain order in this type of categorical data. So in this example, as you can see that they have asked you about your educational background, but we know that there are different phases of education. We start from elementary, high school, undergraduate and graduate. So there is a certain order to it. And these quantifiable numbers actually represent the order as they are in ascending order. So there, the logic behind it is represented by this ascending order. So we start from elementary, then we move on to high school, undergraduate and graduate. So the categorical ordinal data has a certain order to these categories. So let's talk about numerical discrete. First of all, it is separate and distinct, which means that, again, they have no relation whatsoever with each other. For example, the number of people in a house and the exam grades, uh, there are the types which can be counted but cannot be measured. And in mathematics, we usually represent them by integers. So whenever you are faced with a particular example, you can decide whether which type of data it is by asking yourself the two basic questions. Can the data be counted or can it be measured? If it can be counted and cannot be measured, you uh, say that this is numerical discrete. So numerical continuous, it is somewhat the exact opposite of discrete as we have continuous numbers, which are fractions like 2.4, 5.7, 6.7. So all the objects, all the quantities that can be measured but cannot be counted are basically numerical continuous. For example, a person's height, distance, speed, length. So all of these things are basically measurable quantities but they cannot be actually counted. So we have actually looked about four different types of data types. Let's pause here for a moment and ask ourselves a couple of questions. So let's say we have to differentiate between numerical data numerical and discrete, and categorical and nominal data. So they are somewhat similar in a sense. So let me ask you this. What if categories are represented by numbers? Like people from New York are in category one and people from Texas are in category two. So how would you decide which type of data this is? Is it numerical discrete or categorical and nominal or none of the above? So I'm going to take you back and I urge you to ask yourself, can we count the data or can we measure it? So can we count the data or can we measure it? Can you count the number of people living in Texas? Is any sort of information provided in the question? No, it's not. So we cannot count it or we cannot, and we cannot basically measure it. So it is something that is different. And we have categories, we have categories, and these categories are mutually exclusive from one another. So we would go with categorical and nominal. The reason behind and the concept behind would be that regardless of how we represent a particular category, whether it be a number or whether it be an alphabet, it's important to understand the underlying concept behind it. So in this example, we're talking about people living in New York and people living in Texas. Regardless of how they're presented, it's very important to understand the underlying concept. As we will see in machine learning and different types of data sets, that in, especially in classification problems, mostly data is represented in numbers because computers only understand numbers. So regardless, they are numbers, but they are actually categorical nominal data.
Let's further discuss the types of data and dive down into numerical continuous and the different types of continuous data. So the numerical continuous data is further divided into interval and ratio. So moving on to continuous interval data. The continuous interval data is basically these the, the values of this type of particular data are ordered and they have the same difference. So as you can see the example of temperature, we have minus 10, minus 5. You can see these values are ordered from the least to the maximum and they are in ascending order. So the difference between each of these temperatures are same. The temperature between the first two values, the difference between the temperature and the difference between all of the values is same. So this is important. So whenever you have to classify or identify this type of data, you look for ordered units that have the same difference. One other important feature of this type of data is that it does not have a true zero, which means that if we can apply to this example, there is no such thing as no temperature. Temperature always has a certain value. This type of data can be applied to descriptive or inferential statistics. And now we will see continuous ratio data. This is the same as interval data. The same like the difference, the values are ordered and the difference between each value is the same. But this type of data has a true zero. And good examples would be length, height, distance. Length can be zero, uh, distance can be zero, speed can be zero, and all these things.